instrument here is called a continuum and uh, it's a beautiful it, initially I thought of it as a ribbon controller but it's polyphonic so you can play one note per finger um, and beautiful touch sensitivity And then this one just came out, uh, it's called a Seaboard, and it also has the touch sensitivity. It was built with a form factor like a piano, so you could see this 2-3 pattern, which is common to all of these instruments. But uh, it also... has a touch sensitivity but much lower resolution of, of uh, pitch. Uh, with this one, it's seamless. And when you go to this instrument, you can hear that it's in quarter tones, the resolution. So it's your It's much more grainy. I can hear every single pitch as it goes down. It, it, it sounds like a glissando, but it's, it's much more of a coarse resolution versus. That one, which uh, just sounds much more, more full to me. Uh, the difficulty with this instrument is that trying to play a flat surface and keep your fingers and alignment to play things, uh, the pitches you want to play. It's very difficult. You really have to use your eye and your ear. And this instrument tried to uh, use the form factor of the old keyboard so that you know where your hands are if you play the piano. It's uh, very easy to switch from an old, uh, the technique of the standard keyboard. But the trade-off is that you're locked into that kind of a system with uh, 12 pitches, maybe 24 pitches per octave. Um, I hope later that there's an innovation where you can maybe get rid of these these pattern, this typical pattern of a uh, an old-fashioned keyboard, so that you just have these ridges, these generic ridges, and you can program it any way that you want and not be locked into um, the old system. In response to a lot of people that have been asking what in the world is going on over here in my little laboratory, um, I wanted to try to give a little bit of background of the developments um, as I see them for music in the future and how um, I kind of went from 12 pitches per octave to 106. Uh, it seems like a big jump, but once you start to understand the process of it, it makes total sense. And looking back from the future imaginatively, it makes total sense to me that our chromatic system would evolve to a polychromatic system. And the addition of color and the intersection of art and music uh, makes sense. All right. So the difference with these two instruments is that these are what I would consider polychromatic instruments. A chromatic instrument is more like a keyboard where you have your, your tones from C to C chromatically. Like this, these two instruments, you have the tones in one linear direction. Uh, with a polychromatic instrument, you have tones in this vertical dimension as well. So you have C red, C orange, C blue, C violet, however you want to configure it. Same thing here. I program it so that it's a C orange. C yellow, C green, C blue, C violet. Um, the other distinguishing factor of a polychromatic instrument is that you can play more than one tone in this vertical color dimension. So I could play a C orange and a C blue. So uh, it allows you far more freedom to, to actually uh, incorporate all of these color tones and the beauty of the kind of chords that you can't get on any other instrument like um, 
Let's see here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> it's like a second language. I have to translate and figure out what I'm doing here. Um, let's see. So the thing that's captivating about this instrument is that it just, the, the sounds that it unlocks, the shapes, the colors, we don't really have words for it, but uh, in the ear, it's beautiful and it's something you've never heard before or can never hear on a traditional keyboard layout. So um, for me, that's where the future lies and that's why I do all my sketch compositions and I, I write them down in, uh, music notation and it's in kind of a hybrid tab notation like uh, this here because generally tab is thought of as uh, telling you how to play something without telling you the notes and this tells me the notes the colors using alphabetical notation so this is uh, kind of a hybrid between tab notation and standard notation if you think of tab notation is telling you how to play something like what finger on one on what fret. Uh, this uh, is telling you which note and which color of that note to play using an alphabetical notation and then it also tells you how to play it on this keyboard with the layout um, so that it incorporates both. And then I also translate this into polychromatic music notation which is standard notation with the colors added and, and uh, some symbols. There was a big jump between 12 pitches per octave and 106. Uh, but for me, the big breakthrough was to, to think of it polychromatically in terms of color. So in, I always wondered why in the 21st century our music notation system was still black and white. And so when I started colorizing pitch, it transferred to notation so easily um, that uh, it, it just allowed a great expansion in the number of pitches we could handle per octave. Um, when I was in school studying microtonal notation, it just gave me a headache with all of these inconsistent squiggly lines uh, or fractions before a note, uh, still all in black and white. Um, and to me, it's this wonderful convergence of music and visual art to open up a system from black and white chromatic systems uh, like looking at a piano and the black and white keys uh, moving into a whole nother dimension of color and that's the way uh, with this tonal plexus the keyboard is programmed uh, it's probably hard to see but I've marked it with a uh, little color um, tape so I can see where I'm at and uh, transcribe what I'm doing you see the or just like the color spectrum orange yellow green blue violet uh, and the way that it's programmed is these are a fifth apart. That's the interval of a perfect fifth. So you have green here and a green with a dot. Yellow here, yellow dot. Orange, orange dot. And then as we go up, the fifths are above. So with that consistency of color as a guide, uh, it greatly expanded the possibilities um, for uh, pitch palettes, colored pitch palettes. And, and again, it's that merging of visual art with auditory art. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, the harmonies and the colors are so rich. The resolution is so high for our ear um, that there's so much to hear uh, that I really make an effort to keep the rhythm and the melody very, very simple. Um, so that we could start to appreciate and hear all of these changes, the shapes and the colors. And as you get used to that sound, that's when the fun happens and you can add all the rhythm and the complexity of melody. But I think that's gonna be pretty far off in the future at this point.
The difficulty is that the instruments that you're working with that um, are from the mechanical era or say a saxophone, a clarinet, a violin, um, they uh, would have great difficulty playing pitches at this high of a resolution. So I don't know if there will be other instruments besides electronic instruments other than the voice that can um, move forward with this system. Um, in the future, I really hope that the uh, samples, um, the sounds that you can use with this instrument will be a much, much higher resolution in terms of harmonics and going beyond 20 kilohertz. I'd like to see a new format that's um, even higher resolution than a WAV file. Um, I think that as we open up the upper harmonics that we're going to find a lot more beauty there. Um, it's just not quite possible yet with uh, the limitations of speakers and um, recording formats. And hopefully in the future as um, computer storage becomes less of an issue, um, we can look forward to that kind of increased resolution, not only of our pitch palette, but of the sounds that we use to perform uh, in polychromatic music. And how could you not be inspired living in Alaska?